Alright guys and welcome back to Armored Warfare and today we're actually going to be looking at the tactics I played in this match, not the T-72 Ural, the tank. Because I did make a video not too long ago about this vehicle and I don't really want to make another one about it. But there were some good bits to this game that I wanted to show you guys because I don't, I'm not just here to show you gameplay, show you tanks and like that sort of stuff i'm here to try and help you improve your game game your gameplay try and enjoy the game a bit more and just generally have fun while you're doing it i don't really want to show you all these tanks so well i do but not my channel oh, you know what i mean you know what i mean so there are some good bits to this game so this is an mbt this is like a tips and tricks general sort of let's talk tactics sort of thing now so we are on roughneck and we're going to go into the refinery we've got ap loaded at the moment and there's a fox i did take a punt at him on the move but the shell just missed there it just skimmed past his engine deck the fox clumsily tried to turn crashed into the concrete and now he's driven off so i've still got an ap round loaded though i should have changed the heat if i was going to shoot at him and i tried to clutch another round into him that's one thing i recommend not doing it in a t72 there i do make mistakes in this game and i do do some good play in this game and that's why we're here talking about it so those two clutch shots were a bit of a mistake that was a waste of two ap rounds there yes luck could have been on our side and well everyone needs a little bit of luck in their game to do well luck could have been on our side but luck was not on our side and hindsight shows me now that the actual chance of my rounds striking that fox were incredibly low so we're going to push up down here because there is no, there's no one else here. Check down there. No one else either. I am spotted. So instead of pushing out like what some people might do. Instead of pushing out because the T-72's got very poor side and rear armor. Instead of pushing out in front of whatever is around there. And ERC is actually down there. Fox is spotting us. Artie's also firing us. Instead of pushing around, we actually pull back. Pull back. There's the Fox. Fire around into him. Now... I was sitting there thinking to myself, re-watching this game, of course, to try and build a commentary on it. And I thought to myself, if I'd have fired a heat round of that fox, if I'd have loaded one earlier, then I probably could have killed him. He's, we did 457 damage to him with an AP round. It's about 650, nearly 700 damage on the heat. We may have been able to take him out, actually. Or leave him on much lower HP than he already is. So, push through. Nothing's firing at us. We did get spotted. Yeah, we did get hit by two Gov um, a Govosdika twice. But nothing was actually shooting us. So I quickly turned in right to try and get the cover quickly on me. Instead of pushing out forward and then turning, I just turned right and went through. Because I knew no one was in front of me on that alleyway. Now, I do get spotted. And I do think to myself, ah, there's quite a lot actually over there. I, I do put myself in a bit of a situation here where I'm starting to doubt whether I'm pushing too hard. Or I'm just being stupid and not actually playing to, to a strength. So I have finally loaded a heat round because I'm now behind the enemies. Side of a chieftain. I go to fire in the engine. The shell actually goes through the space armor beneath the track in between the rollers and penetrates the side. Doing a juicy 601 damage. Now, I could have sat back behind that concrete bit. Because, yeah, the T-72 Euro is a very low tank. But the chieftain's a high vehicle. So he could have fired over, in, uh, over the concrete onto my turret and would have done damage while i can't put shells back into him because this vehicle is very low now this bit here this spooked me a lot right there he is fire shell disappears oh my god there's a side on m60a3 he puts a 336 uh, 34 damage round into me so i'm like oh my god artillery starts now firing at me because i am in a very open position here i do start to think to myself yeah i'm in a you know, these, there's a lot of guys here. They can all shoot me. There's tank destroyers behind, of course. Big Light Panzer up there. Can I hit him? Uh, I didn't give that enough lead. But the position the position would be good if I didn't have the Gavozdika shooting at me. And that will become apparent, like, now. There's a track. Loading another heat round. There's the Big Light. And boom. No way he was going to get out of that one. Two M60A3s. Now, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, yes, they're not shooting at me. They're looking away. But then I get tracked. And I'm spotted. Disaster. Now, I also played and made a really bad mistake here. I didn't use my repair kit. Massive mistake. Artillery's hit me. The M60A3's tracked me. The artillery's redone that. I finally used my repair kit. My large repair kit, of course. Because I take the large repair kit, large medikit, and an auto fire extinguisher. Just better. And, oh my god, this has not turned out well. To, get, to basically get six shots off and two kills there for... 2,100 damage, maybe? 2,200 damage? To put myself on 13 HP. Literally. 
someone could just tap me and I would die. As well, adding insult to injury, I have a damaged gun. Now, everyone knows the Russian guns are not very accurate. Really, really. They're probably the most inaccurate guns in the uh, on an MBT for their class. At about 0.10 or 0.10 or 0.11 degree spread. Not really that accurate, but they make up with it with the damage and penetration. Now, add a damaged gun to that. Our accuracy is probably about 0.16, 0.15 degree spread. Now, that is horrifically inaccurate. You saw that ERC-90 there as well. No way I was going to take the shot at that guy. No way. And I'm sitting here... I'm surprised I survived this long, to be honest, because the Gavosnika could just shoot me and I'd die. It just splashed near me and I'd die. I finally turned the hull around, because... Since I wasn't expecting to live very long, I didn't. I wasn't playing pretty that well. I reversed out weakest armor showing first into all the enemy guns that could have been out there. But I start to think to myself, yes, maybe I could live. Oh, ERC 90 is coming around behind. Did you hear the tree fall? So quickly spin the gun around. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Heat round loaded. I can take this guy out. Stop. Aim. Here he comes and fire. Just because we were listening. Just because we were staying situationally aware, we saved ourselves from that ERC-90. On 13 HP with a damaged gun, and we're doing alright actually for, our, for ourselves. 2,994 damage. Not bad. So where was I? Yes, that's what I was getting, my point was getting onto before the ERC rudely flanked us and we had to annihilate him. What I'm trying to get at is, don't give up on your team. Like, look at me here. 13 HP, damaged gun. What would you guys do in this situation? Would you give up and call your team noob idiots because they're not helping you? Or would you stay quiet, stay focused, and stay optimistic that you can at least do something to help your team out? Because right here, although I'm sitting far back, I'm still keeping my gun in a position where I can still play, aren't I? That leopard, I can still see him. I'm not taking the shot because look at the accuracy. I'm not going to fire around, get myself spotted, or, and then killed. I want to take a shot that I know I can take. So I'm going to push up closer because there's no enemies really close to me. I am spotted. XP tank has died. And massive gamble here. I jump in the river. Which massively slows down the mobility of this vehicle. MBTs not mobile to start with. Then submerge them so the commander's cupola is just poking out the water like a submarine periscope. And you basically are driving a brick. And that Gavosdika there. Luckily, he's not aiming at us, either. though he could have killed us, but my revenge has been exacted. I always get my revenge on the artillery that plays havoc with me. Take out the Gavosdika, and right here, I see him, and I think to myself, ah, hull down would be better. Instead of firing there and risking killing the RDF, I wait till the RDF has passed my gun, and I know he's not going to come back through, and put around into the Leopard 1A5. So, guys, what do you think? Am I am I helping you with my tips? Did you think this video was remotely helpful with talking through why I did these tactics of a game and trying to tell you guys why I did that, how it's helpful for the team, etc. I, I quite like to hear back your opinions from it. And I just want to improve upon my videos all the time. So, we finished there on 3,990 damage. But do you remember that M60A3 we shot in the side? Because he was actually unspotted. Just because an enemy's not spotted doesn't mean you can't shoot them if you can like see or roughly guess where they are if shells are coming at you from a bush fire back into the bush if you've got nothing else to be doing you might hit them might hurt them you never know do you that m60a3 proved that point 4585 damage so we did about 550 damage hit into the side of the m60a3 with a heat round we came top on the damage top on the kills top on the assists uh, no, second on spot, sadly. Joint second on that. And top on the reputation. Not bad at all. 13 shots fired, 10 hits. Five, uh, 4,542 damage. Not bad at all. Protection. Yeah, we did receive 11 hits, but quite a bit of that was splashed from the Gavosdika, taking, uh, taking us as potential hits to receive. So, guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope I've helped you improve your gameplay. And as always... I'll see you in the next one.